Hello and welcome to our e-bike of the year test. In this, the first part of two videos, we're going to be looking at the shop-bought e-bikes. So we've got the latest bikes from Specialized, Trek, Cube, White and Merida. And it's not just the big players that are represented. Every combination of wheel size is here too. We've got two 27.5 bikes, two 29ers, and one mullet bike. So that's 29 inch on the front, 27.5 on the rear. So Danny, you tested all five shop-bought e-bikes, um, but before we get into the nuts and bolts and the specific models, can you take me quickly through the motors that are available on these bikes? Yes, yeah, so we've got all three of the major motors represented in this test. We've got the Bosch Performance Line CX, which is on three of the bikes here. We've got the brand new Shimano EP8, which is the successor to the E8000. And then we've got the Specialized slash Bros motor on the turbo lever over there. So is the Specialized um, the most powerful motor? Well, we didn't put any of these bikes on a dyno or anything. So all I'm going from is my seat of the pants feel here. But on paper, it's supposed to have 90 Newton meters of torque. Okay. And it feels like that. Yeah, it's got a lot of grunt. It's got a lot of grunt. Yeah. Interestingly, the peak power, they say, is 565 watts, which is a little bit less than the Bosch. But I think it's the, it's the actual torque that you really feel on the bike. It gets that wheel turning when you're going up steep inclines at slow speeds. And in terms of like the actual, like the ride feel of the motor, because it's really easy to get caught up in all these numbers and metrics and stuff, and it turns into like a willy waving contest. What do you think about the feel of that motor? So Specialized has done a great job with that. So that, obviously that's a bro system, yeah. but then they've gone in and calibrated it and, and made their own software mm -hmm. and everything for it. Although it's got a lot of power, it never feels like it's unmanageable. Yeah, it, it never feels, feels like it's pulling your arms out. No, it? Or, yeah. or that it's impossible to get traction. So I think it's a really, they've done a really good job. It works at different cadences. It's always got grunt there. You, you know, when you put it in turbo, it is super addictive, but you don't need to. You can put it in trail and it's still, it's still there when you need it. Very good job with, with that motor, but I think, personally, I, I prefer the Bosch system. I think they've taken it a step further than Specialized, uh, and it, I think from the rider's perspective, it has the, the and, best feel. And the latest Bosch system is really different to the previous one. Yeah, so they updated it earlier this year. They gave it an extra 10 newton meters of torque, but that's not really the, the biggest difference you feel in the saddle, I'd say. It's immediate. As soon as you put any pressure on the pedals, it wants to go. So yeah, in fact, when we were out testing, there's a little whine from the motor. You can hear it. It's just primed and ready. If, if you leave your foot on the pedal, you think there's like a mosquito buzzing around or something yeah, and the motor is. is just, it's ready. Yeah, so there's that, that sensor is just anticipating your first pedal stroke. So if you're starting on a, you know, making hill start or something like that, you haven't, you haven't got to kind of try and get the, the bike moving yeah. before the motor kicks in. I mean, I think that's one of its real strengths. That's because right. technical climbing is one of the most fun things to do in an e-bike. It is, and you know, this is quite a, a German expression, but the, the uphill flow yeah. on, on the Bosch <laughs> motor is amazing yeah. because it's not only the, the responsiveness, it's the fact that it's got this overrun. Yeah. So as soon as you stop pedaling, the motor continues to turn for maybe a meter or a couple of meters. But they're not, they're not the only ones with this because Specialized has that too. And it, it can be a little bit of erratic on the Specialized. Yeah, can't it? That, that's, that's right. It, you know, they always used to do it. It always used to be this, this cool little bonus that you had, but it, it doesn't do it so consistently that you can rely on it. Whereas the, the Bosch, whenever you need it, say if you're climbing up a, a steep hill and there's, there's a step or a, a log or something log or you something want to get over, it, yeah. where you have to stop pedaling, otherwise you're just going to ground yeah. your, your pedals out, then it continues to power you over it. And that's a massive benefit. Like that thing about having the power directly there on, when you stall on a climb, it's, I think that's the Shimano EP8 motor doesn't have that. And I think that's one of its big weaknesses. Yeah, it is. It's a bit unfortunate really, because it is, it is the, the newest motor, but it hasn't really cottoned onto that for some reason. Um, and I think that's potentially something they could improve quite easily yeah, with a software, with a software update. update. But at the moment, as soon as you stop pedaling, that's it. it, it cuts out. It's just not quite there. And it's not just, it's not just the overrun of the motor. It's like, if you're in the wrong gear and you want to get going again, sometimes you feel like 
for the first pedal turn and a half, there's, there's actually, it feels like there's nothing helping. Yeah, you. that's right. I mean, if you need to be in a low gear, it, it likes a cadence, yeah, it, it likes like to the spin. And the I mean, I think that's one of the real strengths of the Shimano motor. It does like the cadence and it feels really intuitive mm. to pedal. Like when, when you stand up and pedal on that bike, there's no choppiness, there's no kind of like disconnect. It's super smooth transition. It's compact, it's light. I mean, they've done an amazing job in so many ways, but I think they're, they're just missing that final bit. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's some advantages it has that others don't. It's the quietest motor when it's working. So in operation, it's super quiet. That's the one to get. Friction's really low too, isn't it? Friction's, because like there's, there's really low resistance when you've right, got no power. That's right, as well. But the downside is that there is some rattle when you're going on rough terrain and you're not pedaling. So there's uh, the, the way that the gears mesh inside and there's a little bit of movement in there. So as soon as there's no uh, tension in the system, it can rattle on the descents. And that, that Merida, it was quite bad on, but we've tried other EP8 motors where it hasn't been as bad. Yeah, so it's different. I think it really depends on the system how the suspension works and the acoustics of the bike. The thing about the Merida is that, and I've ridden, I think I've ridden five or six different EPA bikes. Um, and it's, it's like, it's basically the signal and noise and it's just noise because there's, it actually has no impact on the ride quality at all. And I, what was really weird is that after maybe like, like an hour riding the bike, I just tune it out. I mean, and I'm not saying that it's, that's to forgive the noise, but it's not like you have a loose shock or something that's wrong with the bike where you're getting actually like a signal that says there's something wrong here. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the system. It's just, it's just basically, it's a trade-off I think for having the low resistance means that the cogs aren't as tightly fitting. Yeah, none of them are that noisy. The Bosch is the noisiest probably, yeah. but at the end of the day, it never, it never bothered me on any of them. And, and they're all pretty, like, I mean, we're, we're really nitpicking. Yep. Cause I happily ride any of those motors because they all Me feel too. they all feel good. Me too. They're all yeah. good. None of these issues is a deal breaker. You know, all things being equal, I'd probably take the, the Bosch, but yeah. the Bosch also has some drawbacks as well. So yeah. which we'll get to yeah. on the bikes. Yeah. So that gives us a really good overview of all of the motors involved in this test. Now let's look at the specific bikes. We're gonna start with the Cube and the Specialized. Now Danny, both of these bikes got rated seven out of ten, but like just looking at them. They're completely different. Mm, that's right, not just wheel size, not just travel, not just spec, um, motors, every, I mean, every, in every way, they're completely different. What makes them the same in terms of their ratings? They're, all, they're both good bikes. Like it's when you put them in comparison with the other models on the test that they, they start to sort of slip a bit in the performance. But, um, so if we talk about the, the Specialized first, the, you know, Specialized have absolutely nailed all of the kind of electrical parts of the e-bike. So the motor, the battery, the, all the interfaces, the software, the whole user experience. I is mean, just they were really so ahead of the curve with that com comparison to every other brand. Yep, exactly. And even though this bike, the Turbo Levo is, is now like knocking on three years old, they're still teaching some of the, the competitors a lesson, you know. Yeah. So you've got the biggest battery kind of sh shrink wrapped by the down tube. So you've got this actually quite a minimal down tube and the whole way that you take the battery in and out is really easy. It's streets ahead still. Yeah. It's, an, it's like, it's one of the oldest designs and it's streets ahead of everybody else. All you need is an Allen key, boom, it comes straight out. Yep. You can take it into your house to charge, boom, sling it back in, clip in the little magnetic connector and you're good to go. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, the, the Allen key is even right there. So you so you haven't got to, got to go in your pack for a tool either. So they've got, you can, customize how you interface with the motor as well. The actual, the, I think they call it the, the TCU on the top tube is the power on and off button, but it also lets you change all the modes. You can see how much battery you've got, so you can have the remote or you can get rid of it completely. Yeah, I, mean, that's you, a, I mean, that's amazing. Like, I mm. love the fact that there's no display. Yeah, and then you've got the mission control app on your phone, so you can, yeah. if you, you want to go into detail, customize stuff or check the, any kind of diagnostics, that's all there as well. So everything about that is amazing. The frame design, I think, with the sidearm is really cool. Yeah. They've routed the cabling through the sidearm, so none of it goes through the down tube, so that means they keep the down tube smaller. It's smart. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really smart. clever, isn't yeah. it, what they've done? It's... But this is, the, you know, this is the most expensive bike here, by some margin, at 6,300. And they've gone, you know, they've gone their own way with the motor. 
and all the, the system integration. But also, you know, they've had some well-known issues with the belts recently. Yeah. They've come up with some solutions to that. Apparently there's a, a, a reinforced belt in there and they've changed the software so that there's not such a peak power load on it. Yeah, so, okay. so, the, so the motor should be more reliable than before. The motor should before. be more reliable. And also they've increased the warranty to four years. So okay. you should be covered. But the problem is, is if something does happen to it when you're in the middle of nowhere, you're on your yeah, own. I mean, I mean, in specialized defense in a way, is there's more of these bikes on the trail than any other bike. It's an incredibly popular bike, and you can yeah. see why, because it really did rewrite the kind of the, the, the game for e-bikes when it came out in terms of performance. Yeah. And it's still really good. I mean, this, this one here is the first alloy one I've ridden. We've spent loads yeah. of time on the carbon ones, but actually it's really nice the way they manipulated the ride feel of this bike. So I actually think it feels better than the carbon bikes. It's got some it. softness to it. Yeah, so it, it, it kind of finds the path of re least resistance yeah. when you're on rough, rough trails and stuff. So, and, and it's a really lively shock tune as well. So there's, there's a lot of pop to it. I and mean, when like, we were riding those like kind of flatter single track trails, I was actually blown away with like how much fun that bike was and how like easy it was to maneuver. And like, and like, and I think also the, the power is addictive. It is a powerful it, bike. It is. But, um, as soon as we tipped into like steeper, more technical trails, I felt like I was in over my depth. Yeah, so there's a very much like a forward bias on the, on the bikes in terms of your sort of weight balance. It's got the shortest reach by far and a pretty long back end. It's got the longest back end, the shortest reach. And then there's that big battery too. And the big battery. Yeah. And as soon as you start tipping into steep trails, everything starts kind of onto the fork, yeah. tipping over forward. And we actually both had a like, you had a moment in yeah. the, and I had a crash in on exactly the same, same spot track. on the same trail. Yeah, totally. Just as Different we started. Days. Yeah, That's yeah. right. It was a, yeah. And it just sort of goes to show that it's brilliant on the sort of mellower stuff, but it just starts to get a little bit hard to kind of get the balance right on the on the. I think it also stuff. goes to show that we both got lulled into it too. Yeah, so it's, you know, great, I think, for sort of general trail riding and stuff. But if you're riding more enduro tracks and stuff, it, it gets a little bit out of its depth. So just to sum up, what do you think would make this bike better? So it needs, it needs reshaping. So obviously Specialized have just introduced like the new Evo and new Stump Jumper Evo and Stump Jumper with a new geometry, this S sizing. It needs that. So it needs that long so we front need sensors. A turbo Levo Evo. Something like that. Yeah, it's like that's I a mean, mouthful. Be, it though. is a mouthful, yeah, but it'll be, like, yeah. it'll be awesome yeah, on the trail. It'll be really cool. So let's move over to the Cube. Um, like this bike, to me, I just, I look at these two bikes side by side and I'm like, are you sure this is even in the same price point? Mm. I mean, look at it. it look looks, at all the Kashima bling. It looks like a, a direct sales bike, doesn't it? There's so, yeah. there's so yeah. much <laughs> top end kit on it. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you're like, how do they do it? And it's a carbon frame as well. There's two bikes in here with a carbon front triangle. Yeah. That's one of them. Interestingly, it's like one of the heaviest bikes here. So you're not actually saving any weight. So it's got one of the highest specs with a carbon frame and it's still one of the heaviest bikes? Yep. Wow. So you're, I think with the carbon, you're, you're probably getting a stiffer chassis and you can feel that in how solid the bike is when you're, when you're really trucking along. Yeah, I mean, if they can take 500 or even 750 grams out of a frame with carbon, but the bike weighs 23, 23 kilos. 23 kilos, one, it's nothing as a percentage, yeah. isn't it? That's so, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, look, I mean, it's a super angular, muscular thing. Um, so it's, it's certainly eye-catching without even that paint job. When, when I rode this bike, um, I've actually ridden the non-e-bike version of this too, the, the Stereo, and um, it was a really stiff bike. And actually had a really similar spec, same, same finish, same colors, action team finish and everything. And when I got on the e-bike, they definitely transferred that feeling over. And I sort of, I found the bike a little bit harsh. Mm. Yeah, so there was kind of two big problems with this bike really. One was that the suspension just felt kind of, didn't have enough support, it was too linear. So we just used up all that travel pretty much on any kind of bump. So you've got this sort of seesawing motion and you combine that with having a very kind of tall upright riding position. I mean, the, one of the reasons for that is the stem didn't go down, isn't it? Yeah, so it's got this integrated stem. They were like a lot of brands are trying to, with their e-bikes, create this kind of minimal cockpit look, and they're feeding the, the all of the cables through the head tube, the through, well, not the head tube, through the headset. Yeah. 
Uh, but actually, it's it, it, made, makes a, it, made, a it. it made a mess of it. It made a mess of it. And not only that, yeah. it's actually really hard to uh, adjust the the stem height because yeah. the, the all of those spacers are shaped to fit into each other and you can't actually put them on top of the stem so yeah and i think the stem's got some rise on it too yep. so you definitely need like if, if you're more like an experienced rider you're going to want a lower front end just so you can load the load load the front exactly. tire more basically yeah. and it's the longest travel as well so it's got a you know 160 fork so you're further you're further away from the front axle and it it was hard to load load up the front end especially with that rear end kind of ch you know seesawing a bit as well it was just hard to get sort but of one of the real on strengths of this bike is that it was pretty agile wasn't it in like yes. on tighter trails slow speeds tighter trails it, you know it had that almost like trialsy kind of feel to it agility okay. to it so there's definitely some some bonuses where it where it worked really well so it's just not as rounded a package as some of the bikes we're going to get to in a minute definitely yeah and there's things like you know our very first full suspension e-bike we tested was a cube back in 2014 and and yet they're still doing things like you've got the the speed sensor on the chainstay like totally visible with a magnet on the wheel which yeah. most of the brands now are Moved hiding them from. at the dropouts yeah. th things like that you're like well you've been you guys have been doing this for so long yeah. you should be kind of ticking all those boxes so moving up through the ratings we get to the merida e160 now danny this bike doesn't actually have 160 mil of travel, does it? No, that's right. I mean, they Merida claim 150 mil, but we measured it about 143. Does it have a 160 mil fork? It does have a so 160 mil. So, like the fork. white E160, they're basically they get the away with the travels based on the fork, not the frame travel. Okay. Yep. It's the only EP8 bike in test, and we were lucky to get this bike. Yep. Yeah, it's a uh, you know new motor, big big fanfare about it, and then I think you know Shimano have done a really good job with it. Yep. It's not maybe class leading in every area, but in some areas it is class leading. So um, certainly weight, how compact I mean, it it's is. It's tiny. Yeah, the, the noise, still the user interface is really slick. You know, they've got the new bigger battery in there. There's a lot of things to like about it. The crank interface is really good. So yeah, it's a good system. It's a good system. Now, there's a lot of things on this bike that don't normally come on e-bikes like lights and mud guards and are they cooling fins on the on behind the head tube? Yeah, I mean they've they've gone to, to town when they've designed this thing. I mean it's pretty cool that you get a lot of freebies with it. You know, you get a tool under the saddle, you get this this front light, you get um, mud guards. The light is actually not powerful enough to ride off road at night, so it's more of a commuter light. Um, but you know, all these things are kind of distracting from the main event, which is the bike. And I think actually the, the chassis and the suspension and the geometry is actually really good yeah, on this they Merida. Really, they're really good. They've done it's a really the, good job on it. It's the one mullet bike in this test. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of mullet e-bikes. I think they, they work really good as a, as a kind of best of both worlds. So in terms of tire size, it's not a 2.8 on the rear, is it? No, so this one's got a 2.6, so very slightly smaller diameter, but I think the, the big difference is you just don't get that kind of squirming when you're in yeah. like loading it up through corners. Okay. It's a bit more consistent. Which is probably really useful on a bike that's um, this pushing, pushing like 50 pounds. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is relatively light uh, amongst these, these um, test bikes, but it's still, you know, it's not light compared to an analog, analog yeah. bike. But what Merida, has also done is they put a double down tire on the on the front and the back so it's actually really good through the turns and that mullet configuration just really really sort of sets you up into corners really helps you initiate turns and, and i really like it I, I read a lot of feedback on this bike and like its predecessor um the earlier version of it when it came out was that people complained that the front end was a little bit too high um, like I, when I rode it, I had no issues loading the front end. And if anything, it was actually, it felt like my feet were too low. I think it's got a really good position if you're more gra like a gravity focused rider. I mean, it even comes with the max grip front tire. So like it's, that's a, that's a downhill yep. compound. It is. And it lets you get away with, with things that you can't do on any of the other test bikes in stock trim, you know, lines that you would never be able to do. Uh, 
what it what it does the compromise though is, is the range yeah it makes a big difference like i mean the tire obviously influences the bike a lot i mean that's one of the reasons why we change all the tires on the bikes. so all of the bikes here have got stock tires on them um, but we actually switched to our maxis control tires for this test it's not just about the handling of the bikes it's really it's about the battery drain like slower tires drain your battery faster totally and um, so i think you know you gain 25 to 30 percent extra grip but you yeah. lose the range equivalent yeah, yeah. i mean I like this bike a lot. I mean, like, I, it's got a really good ride feel to it. It looks like a little bit of bike of two halves. Like the front end looks really futuristic. The rear end looks a bit retro because it's kind of all curvy and bendy. Um, but the balance and the handling, it's like, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's good at low speeds. It's good at high speeds. It's really good rear suspension. It's got enough support. It's got real good sort of sensitivity. It's let down a little bit by the fork. So the fork feels good in isolation, but as soon as you kind of run it back to back with things okay. like the 38 and the Zeb on the other, on a couple of the other bikes, it starts to feel a little bit undergunned. So yep. there's a bit of, hits a bit of a wall kind of deeper yeah, in the travel. A ramp. There's a quite a ramp in the spring curve, I think, yeah. on the fork, isn't there? Um, which, you know, means that you, when you're really pushing it on, on rough, like the roughest sort of tracks, it starts to like punch and, back at you. And like, to be fair, the bike really encourages you to do that. It does. <laughs> it's yeah. like it really encourages you to hammer. Yeah, it's super well balanced. It encourages you to sort of play around and stuff, but it's still got the stability to, to really like let the let the throttle. I mean, it wouldn't it wouldn't take much for Maria to just like to step this bike up a notch, would it? No, I think um, a slightly better fork and some slightly better wheels because the the wheels kind of fell apart, the rear wheel. Yeah. Um, and maybe if they didn't give you all these freebies Get rid of some of the clutter. and put that money into the, yeah. to those parts, you'd have an amazing bike. I think the kind of rider that would really appreciate the handling of this bike doesn't want any of that clutter. For kind of aggressive riders, 90% uh, of this bike is great. Just the, the kind of finishing touches to really let you I mean, if someone it. was to look at the next model up. Yeah, so on the next model up, you get a better fork and better wheels. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, so that's the Merida, eight out of 10. Let's move on to the next bike, the white yep. E160. E1, another E160. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> From the Merida E160 to the white E160. Two brands with the same name, but very different approaches. So Danny, you rated the white nine out of 10. And I know from talking to you, you toed and froed quite a bit with the winner on this bike. Yeah, God, it was a difficult decision. I'm, I, I, love, I love riding this bike absolutely hate taking the battery out to charge it yeah <laughs> i mean like i actually did the first ride on this bike and to be honest i never took the battery out because i had no need to and i charge it up at the office every time i rode it and like it was I ne it never even occurred to me that the fact that the way they've clocked the motor and slid the battery down the down tube to get like all the weight as low as possible that basically that would mean getting the battery out would be more difficult. Yeah, so if you're lucky enough to be in that camp where you don't need to take it in and out, you know, if you've got power in your garage or your shed or whatever, then this bike all the way, get one, you'll have a blast on it. If you don't want to take your bike inside and you haven't got power in your, where you store it, think about it because it really so is what a So what does it actually involve? Because I've not done it myself. Well, I mean, the first thing to say is like you, you mentioned about the, the weight balance and, and kind of clocking the motor. And, you know, what they've done is basically the same as the Specialized, but getting the battery in and out couldn't be more different. So while most brands kind of cut out a massive slot or a window in their, in their down tube, White has kept it completely enclosed apart from base of the down tube so it slides in and out from the bottom but what you've got to do is you've got to take off that protective cover which is you need an allen key to do then you've got to unscrew the block which has the connector attached yeah. to the bottom to the of the battery, battery. Yeah. so then that comes out with, with a load of wiring and then hopefully the battery slides out but not always sometimes okay. it gets stuck now getting it out is not as bad as getting it back in even though it's got stuck before during testing. I've had it bouncing up and on, down on the back wheel out. to shake it out. It's almost dropped on my toes. It's hit the floor. And this is, you know, a thousand pound battery we're talking about. And then to get it back in, because the cables all run down through the, the down tube as well, they can actually get snagged in the battery and cause okay. it to get wedged. 
So it's it's quite, sounds like a nightmare. It's I mean <laughs> it's like, I've been like yeah. stressing every time I've had to get it in. It's been a stress, and I, in, I couldn't live with that to be honest. I understand that, like, and that's a completely different experience to the experience I had on this bike. Um, so my experience was just plug it in, charge it, forget about it, ride it. And when it comes to riding it, like, I was pretty blown away by it. Exactly, and you know, you soon forget about the woes when you start riding it because it, it is amazing to ride. They've done such a good job, and whether you know, partly I think it's that bringing that weight distribution down and centering yep. it that's made, even though this is the heaviest bike here, it rides one of the lightest. Yeah, so you never does. feel like it has, a, like it's a burden. It's a very dynamic ride. It's super I mean, agile. Yeah. It's really poppy, really playful. They've got this super light damping tune with quite a lot of progression yeah, the, to the fact, suspension. When they increased from the E150 to the E160, they added some progression to the linkage and you definitely, you notice that. You can really yeah. kind of like so you load can, it up and spring off it. And, and even though it's kind of lightly damped, on, on really big sort of senders, step downs and stuff, it's not harsh at all when you're landing. I'd say it's the, the least harsh bike. But the thing is, you don't actually need a lot of damping on an e-bike because if they build them, if you build it right, it's inherently more stable. Yeah. Um, so like, it, I think they really lead the way on that, on getting the suspension feel and the tune right for like, for the application. They've nailed the tune. It's still got yeah. enough support and like, you can ride this bike so hard. And when you're going through the roughest, sections at the highest speeds there was absolute solidity yeah. and confidence and composure and again the, they've got all the details good like the saddle's comfortable they've got good tires on this bike the wheels are solid um like it's a bike that's built to last yeah every little bit on it it's you know it's not stuff that's super exciting but it all works really well and yeah. the, i really like the fork performance it felt really supple really supportive and so that's the grip charge. one 38 yeah. yeah yeah even with that kind of more basic damper it felt amazing but i think i think that's one of the things that i actually liked about that damper with the shock was the fact that they're both quite open and they feel they feel really balanced together the, the response is really similar yeah totally so I, yeah i rode everything that i'd ride on an analog bike on this bike and more like uphill felt really good it's quite a steep seat angle even with the small wheels, you know, it felt pretty good. The chainstays are n neither too long nor too short. They're kind of Goldilocks in yeah. the middle. So it's, it's a real good all-rounder, but it feels amazing when you start charging hard. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, I loved riding this bike. Um, it's probably, in terms of suspension feel, it's definitely my favorite. Um, but yeah, now knowing what you went through with the battery, I can understand why if that's, that, could, that could really be a deal breaker for someone. For some people, totally. Yeah. And if, if, that's, if that's not you, then you'll have a blast on this bike and it won't trouble you at all. But when you see, when you look at other brands like Specialized and Trek and the effort that they've put into to make that battery easy to get in and out, yeah, you yeah. can't just gloss over the, the problems that come with this. And I think there's a few things that White can do to make it a lot easier. And I think they're already on that case. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're always pushing with these bikes. So it'd be interesting to see how they fix it. So that just leaves one bike, the Trek Rail 9. 29 inch wheels, long slack geometry. It's absolutely a monster truck. You've spent a ton of time on this bike, Danny. And I think Probably wasn't just, it wasn't just about like working out which one's the best one. It was basically because it was the bike you enjoyed riding the most. Yeah, um, you know, I, I loved riding the white as well. I think in terms of pure, pure ride experience, they are so close, those two bikes, maybe even the whites a little bit in front. Um, but I would ha be happy to own either of these bikes. They are fantastic all round e-bikes. Yeah. And you know, if you if you're thinking about the kind of the unique sort of sales point of the of the Trek is it, it's like a, a, as you say a monster truck. I would love to put one of these back to back with like a Trek session on a downward track because yeah, I think totally. it would yeah, be totally. I mean, as quick. And the geometry is as progressive. Like, it is. This, this it's a black, 63 and a half yeah. head angle. It's the reach is pretty good, like sort of 460-ish reach. It's got a big wheelbase. Big wheelbase, yeah. balanced though, front and front to rear. The BB's neither neither too high nor too low. We didn't yeah. get many pedal strikes, but because the wheelbase is so long, there's so much stability there. 
Um, it's got you know a really imposing, really solid fork at the front that you can just tr truck into stuff with. Yeah, the Zeb is a big burly fork, and it like is. it's and it's fitting that it's basically it's available this year and in line with the upgrade to the Bosch motor. You've got the power, you've got the fork. I mean, this bike's got everything. Really, the whole thing's it? kind of pulled together, I think, with with that Zeb now. Um, it's got the through shaft shock, which is which is super sensitive off the top, but it's got loads of support. The Bosch motor is, you know, immensely powerful. It's got that up uphill flow. Yeah. It's got the range with the 625 watt hour battery. Then you've got like cool little things where Trek has sweated the details with the with the display on the top tube, so it's kind of out of harm's it's way. It's protect, well protected there. And also, what I noticed when I rode it was it wasn't in my field of vision, which I really liked. Yeah, so you won't get the sun glinting yeah. off it or just distracting you from from kind of the trail ahead. Um, the remote is a bit of a letdown. That's the big the big thing with Bosch. The the one area where they really need to improve is is the remote. It's just too big, too clunky, takes up too much space. Every time you flip the bike upside down, it's digging into the ground. Yeah, in fact, I couldn't really decide which which one was better between this remote or the display remote combined that we got on the white. It's like yeah, they're it's both, like they're swings and roundabouts. With what's both the of best them. of yeah. a bad bunch? Yeah, it's like, yeah I mean it is. That, I mean. They will sort it out, I'm sure, yeah. as it stands now. Again, it's not a deal breaker. You, you just, something you live with. Cause thought, well, the Bosch EMTB mode. I mean, that, that, that saves them basically because you just put it in that and forget about it. Well, that's the irony, isn't it? You don't need to touch the remote because you just stick it yeah. in the MTB and you you know, ride it all day. So they could have no, <laughs> they could have nothing and it would be fine. Everything on it really is, is dialed, I think. I mean, and we should point out that Although I said it's a monster track, that's a bit of an overstatement because when I rode this bike, no point did I think like the bike was big and unwieldy. I mean, there was maybe one or two instances in all the rides that I did it where the trail would come, it would get tight real fast. And then all of a sudden I'd be like, oh my God, this bike's really big. But then it would just basically feel normal again in an instant. And it could also be the fact that it just allows you to come into stuff so hot that basically it just it closes in even faster it's uh, i think they've managed to stop it being a blunt instrument yeah but it does feel most at home when you're just at speed just ripping over rough terrain i mean it, it feels like a sort of a, you know a four-stroke motorbike or something it's it, it's a really is as capable as a slash i would say on on downhills um, but You've just got that inbuilt motor to get you back up and just do run after run after run. Yeah, so it's interesting that our two top bikes then are both running the Bosch system. Um, you've got the Trek with the remove, easily to remove battery. You've got the White with the slightly improved suspension performance and centered mass, but the more awkward battery to get out. So they're two amazing bikes. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, the Bosch is my favorite system. You know, it wasn't the motor that won it for these bikes. It's the, the whole package and yeah, how I mean, it rides. It's, I mean, it's, you mean, you look, you take the Specialized, for example, and it had, it had the most powerful motor and the biggest battery, but that didn't make it the best bike in test. No, no. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed that test as much as we did. Um, click to subscribe, and that way you won't miss out on the second part of this test, where we cover the key direct sales brands.